Hi. In this video, I'd like to explore the meaning and significance of commitment, which is a topic suggested by a viewer who goes by the name of Hack Ed, or maybe it's supposed to be hacked, I'm not quite sure how to say it. But in any case, tip of the chapeau to you, Mr. Hack Ed, or hacked, wherever in this world you might be. Anyhow, here's the usual table of contents for the material in this video, and as usual, you can find the same table of contents in the description section of this video, along with links to the timestamps. Anyhow, we should probably begin by getting a handle on what commitment actually is, as well as on what it seems to be, but isn't. And here, I'd like to begin with two observations. The first has to do with the fact that committing to a course of action becomes important only insofar as we're dealing with situations that are difficult, or at least that can become difficult. That's because when we're just dealing with things that are straightforward and easy, there's no real need for commitment in the first place. For instance, most of us don't need to commit to tying our shoes in the morning. But on the other hand, when situations do make significant demands on us, and when it's easy to find reasons to quit what we're doing, that's when commitment, or the lack thereof, becomes an issue. For instance, that's why traditional marriage vows include phrases like for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. It's a way of acknowledging that commitment in marriage involves a willingness to live through difficult and even painful times. The second thing I'd like to mention in the beginning has to do with how we commonly confuse commitment with something like fanaticism or zealotry, with being completely convinced that what we're doing is true and correct. And here I should probably acknowledge a debt to two sources that have informed my own thinking. One is the 19th century philosopher Soren Kierkegaard, or Kierkegaard if you want to be more authentically Danish, and the other is a guy named Richard Knowles, who was one of my professors during my graduate school days, and who wrote this book right here. Anyhow, the point is that both Kierkegaard and Knowles differentiate genuine commitment from the self-certainty of fanaticism. For instance, following Gordon Allport's analysis, he was a famous American psychologist, Knowles casts commitment in terms of being, quote, half sure, but wholehearted. In contrast, fanaticism is about being fully sure and wholehearted. That's an important distinction, even if it's somewhat at variance with our prevailing beliefs about the nature of commitment, and especially at variance with those that would maintain that to be committed to something is to be completely convinced of its truth and validity. But according to Knowles, that's actually a counterfeit of commitment and not the genuine article. That's because genuine commitment isn't about being stolidly rigid or dogmatic like a robot, but about being dependably and adaptably real, even if that means having to change our minds about things now and then. Basically, unlike a zealot, a genuinely committed person recognizes that all of our involvements, and even our most passionate ones, are prone to faults, errors, and misdirections, mostly because that's how we perceive the world in the first place. But at the same time, a genuinely committed person is able to engage the world in a wholehearted, passionate way. But how are we able to accomplish that somewhat paradoxical feat? Well, at one level, I'd say that the answer has to do with learning to balance the demands of our hearts against the demands of our minds, without letting either one consume us. That's when our decisions become real, when they're the product of our larger, more integrated selves. After all, if we're lacking sober perspicacity, if we just let our passions run riot, then our commitments will probably degenerate into mere fanaticism, devoid of strategic, rational acumen. And they'll probably, they won't last very long either, because sooner or later, reality will intrude unceremoniously upon all of our passionate fabrications and fantasies. But on the other hand, if we lose our passion and let our rational minds run everything, well, 
That's not sustainable either, because it takes a fair measure of actual passion to motivate and maintain our commitments over time. Basically, we need passion because most of us don't behave like well-programmed robots, and consequently, we can't run on mere logic and rationality alone. As Blaise Pascal once famously put it, the heart has its own reasons that reason knows not of. And so, without some of those reasons, odds are that we'll become tired of our commitments pretty quickly and then begin to search for semi-plausible justifications and excuses for breaking them. But of course, integrating our hearts and minds is something that's a lot easier to say than to do. So then the question becomes, well, okay, so how can we learn to do that at least a little bit better? Well, I'd say that the first step has to do with developing our capacity for self-awareness. After all, without self-awareness, without being able to see deeply into our own internal workings and dynamics, it's difficult even to realize that we're out of whack in the first place. And when that's happening, odds are pretty good that we'll be completely mystified when we discover <laughs> much to our astonishment that we're having quite a bit of trouble with actually keeping our commitments. Sure, we may start out with the best of intentions, but over time it becomes increasingly clear that what at first seemed to be sincere and solid commitments often turn out to be nothing but a big bunch of empty promises without force or substance and that do nothing to improve our lives. So, perhaps the first somewhat surprising insight into the nature of commitment is, without a decent level of self-awareness, and consequently an ability to know our minds and our hearts pretty well, there's very little chance for genuine commitment in the first place. However, a related problem has to do with how easy it is to confuse commitment with simple obedience. But the fact is that there's a world of difference between really committing to something and just kowtowing to other people's expectations and demands. That's because a commitment in the genuine sense springs from our authenticity, from our capacity to be true and honest with ourselves, rather than our tendency just to conform to what everyone else is doing. And in turn, the reason why it's hard to be committed when we're just conforming is that it's very difficult to feel the kind of passion that would motivate and sustain our commitments when deep down inside we know that we're not really being true to ourselves, when we're just trying to satisfy other people's desires and designs, when we're basically just going through the motions and we've lost our sense for who and what we really are. Sure, we can easily get through our lives that way, always pretending to worship other people's hollow tin gods. You know, <laughs> by adopting the kinds of habits and values that may seem convincing on the surface, but that aren't actually our own. But it's really hard to feel genuine passion for our commitments when we're doing that, when deep down inside we know that we're just living out a great big lie. So I'd say that in addition to cultivating general self-awareness, it's also important to begin to perceive who and what we really are. Because without those two related capacities, genuine commitment will always be elusive, and it will never flow joyfully from the true center and strength of our being. Instead, it will always feel like like an enervating burden, like an exercise in continual self-flagellation, like something ugly and repellent rather than a source of meaningful engagement with life. So at this point, let's take a minute to bring all of that down to a more immediately personal level. If you're finding that it's really difficult to keep commitments, well, the reason for that may be that they're not actually springing from the person you really are, possibly because you haven't cultivated the kind of self-awareness that would make all of that clear to you yet. An important word. Of course, that's not necessarily an easy thing to admit to ourselves, mostly because it can be a very shameful thing to confess that we're basically lost in life. 
So maybe we should take a minute or two right now to diffuse that particular shame bomb. Let me just say it bluntly. There's absolutely no need to feel shame about discovering that we don't really know our own souls or that we've been living someone else's life rather than our own. The unpopular truth is that most of us actually spend a pretty large fraction of our time living according to other people's agendas. For instance, by automatically adopting their habits and values as our own, when they're really not. <laughs> and in case you haven't noticed it, there are always way more than enough people constantly telling us what to think, how to speak, and how to behave, quote, appropriately. And consequently, for most of us, it's a long, hard, uphill struggle even to begin to lay claim to our own lives. You know, to start to perceive the world in our own distinctive ways, to begin to think our own thoughts, and to speak the truth as we ourselves see it. So, contrary to popular opinion, there's really no shame in discovering that we've been living a great big lie, maybe for quite a few years. First, because that's actually incredibly common, but also because, well, because at the end of the day, what task in this universe is more worthy of our time and energy than that of moving a little closer to fulfilling our first and best destinies, of learning to be true and faithful to ourselves, even if it means disappointing or outraging the people around us. Actually, especially if it means that. Personally, I can't easily think of a better task. And this brings us to what I feel is the deep foundation of commitment which isn't so much about committing to this or that course of action or set of ideas or this or that person. Instead, it's about committing to our lives themselves in all of their pain and horror, as well as all of their brilliance and rapture. In my view, actively committing to our lives is important because it's what comes before any of our more specific commitments. And as I said earlier, it's not a matter of simply fooling ourselves into thinking that we know what's going on in this world, but about throwing ourselves fully into the adventure of traversing life's uncertain terrain, no matter where it ends up taking us. It's about, it's about showing up for the damn ride and consequently learning to endure life's inevitable ambiguities and difficulties, and also learning how to change ourselves when circumstances warrant it. It's about developing an uncertain sense for life's farther reaches and its deeper possibilities, as well as feeling an ardent desire to experience them fully and completely, a passionate desire to consummate our existence itself. In that regard, I'd say that the road of commitment is also a deeply spiritual road. It's about realizing that you and I and everyone else in this world have been born into a magnificent adventure, the amazing adventure of life itself in all of its ecstasy and all of its terror. And in my view, that fundamental willingness to step forward into the seething welter of life, into that staggering and incalculable vastness is the deep source of all of our smaller, more particular commitments, as well as the origin of our capacity to keep our commitments, both to ourselves as well as to the people around us. That's because, ultimately, the art of commitment is about learning to balance the pain and horror of human existence against the wondrous miracle of it. And once we've learned to do that, at least a little bit, then maybe, just maybe, being half sure but wholehearted won't seem quite as impossible as it might have at first. Well, at least that's what my own 60 years on planet Earth have taught me about commitment so far. Subject, as always, to revision and change. <laughs> maybe later today. 
Oh, <laughs> remember, half sure but wholehearted. Anyhow, thanks as always for taking the time to watch and listen. Much gratitude for all of you out there in YouTube land. And also, gratitude to you for being another willing wanderer in this universe, in this life. And of course, as always, take care of your soul.